Porn Stars of People podcast and DFW Let Your Host. We're here with Olivia Cassidy. Thank you for meeting with me. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> um, so we're, uh, we're in Tampa, give or take, right? Um, this is sort of my second time here. What um, I Nobody really tells me what I'm supposed to do in Tampa that is better than anywhere else. I couldn't tell you either. But you, li- you like, you, you've chosen to be here because. Um, that's where everyone is for the line of work that okay, I do. So <laughs> this is where the fetish is. This yeah. Then this is where you do it. So do you go to fet? Did you go to FetCon? Yep, every year. Cool, <laughs> awesome. It's uh, it's my first year. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to infiltrate. I just found out sort of when it is. Um, did you go to any of the conferences this weekend? The expizzes and the. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What uh, what do you um what do you like? How do you maintain this? Uh, like like I've been in Tampa and I've gotten burned twice. How do you maintain this level of of uh, of non sun in Tampa? Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't go out in the sun a lot, to be honest with so you. <laughs> so this is the day. Yeah. This is the day I g- you get a tan. Porn stars are people. P- porn stars also are getting tans on the podcast. Did you hear about <laughs> what we did in town? We did a we did a thing where we took comedian uh, porn stars and made them do comedy. Yeah, I wanted to go to that, but I couldn't make it. <laughs> you uh, I'm gonna try to convince you next time we're in town when we do it to try to, to do the comedy part. I can try. I don't think I'm funny. <laughs> yeah, um, it was very it was a very fun show. So the, the the stakes were set so low, uh, on on what it what it really means and what it takes to to be funny. Um, Raquel did fantastic. Uh, Maria sort of just went up and won it. Raquel like, came up with notes. Maria went up and won it. Um, it was a really good time, man. I, I think I think we want to try to do more. Of, and then I had the two of the people from here. So I had Vicky and Brandon uh, on the other coast when we did it in Miami. Awesome. So that was super cool. So what do you, okay? So what are your what are your like what are your likes and interests? Like what are the things that like get you through every day? Um, I like food. Okay. <laughs> um, What's like your go-to meal? I like sushi a okay. lot. <laughs> now are you are you authentic? Like are you getting like um, sashimi? And just piles of fish, or are you? I like all of it. Are you getting like <laughs> dragon rolls with like the extra sauce? I don't like on that top? much though. That's too much. Yeah. <laughs> I like just plain stuff, like yeah. fish and rice. Yeah, that's how I started. Was uh, was was the you know so they people so much trying to introduce you and they get the California rolls. Yeah. And spider roll and fried shrimp, shrimp tempura, and then eventually it's just sort of yeah. It's like uh, if I could just get like a like a giant pile of fish. Yeah, uh, and, and, <laughs> and a little bit of seaweed salad. I'm I'm uh, I'm rocking. So what else? What are, what are what are your other cuisines of choice? Um, I like Thai food a lot. Um, I like soup. <laughs> what's your favorite? What's your favorite place to eat in Tampa? Probably this place called Origami Sushi. Okay, that's really good. Where they fold it all up, fancy for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what else? Do you have animals? What's your um? What's like your What's like your like mission of? I have a really fat cat named Mr. Biscuits. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Is he fat in his own accord, or yes. is this something that you're d- that he's, you're? He's fat on his own accord. Like I feed him a normal amount of food, yeah. he just lays around all day. I try to play with him, and he's the laziest cat yeah. to play with. He just kind of paws at things while he's laying well, on he's his on belly. His back, back, yeah, back, back, back. that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I had a uh, buddy of mine has this has this uh, joke about he had a cat. And it was an indoor outdoor cat, and, so, and the cat was getting fat, and the uh, um, and the he, he's like, well, we're putting out like the right amount of food, and he's like talking to the vet, and he's like, he's like the cat like doesn't tell us if he eats out, like if he goes out and he eats like he eats like nine mice outside, he doesn't come back, and he's like, no, 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 I already ate out. Um, I'm still trying to figure out cat culture. There's, I think I've met more cats in Tampa than than I've ever met in my life. We have a lot of cats here. There's a uh, it's cat people. I don't know if that's a, if that's I don't know if it's just people in this in this business and you guys are all like minded with the cat thing. Or I think it's like a fetish model stereotype that everyone owns a cat. Okay. Specifically, most people an orange cat. I don't have an orange cat. Right. He's like gray and brown and spotty. But okay, this, this is a good one to know. <laughs> is that whenever whenever there's a video going on, there might just be a yellow or an orange cat walking yeah. by. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's uh, I've, that's that's my experience so far. So so far, the stereotype is true. Um, so I don't know. Do you know sort of where we're at? Like, there's like the I did like the the city walk or whatever. Yeah, this is like downtown area. And supposedly, like concerts and such happen right over here. I think so. I'm not sure. I don't come down here much. <laughs> What's your so you li- so you're legit just just herm or just hermited at home? Yep, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> it wor- It works well for the uh, for the line of work. Right. 
Yeah, I, I hate going out. I'm very introverted. <laughs> well, I'm glad I got you out of the building today. Um, what do you, what's your, what's like your musical taste? What do you, what do you go after? I prefer like metal and rock. I like some pop and stuff and hip hop and rap, but I mostly listen to just metal. So like what, what was your like uh, get ready like um, morning music this morning? Um, I have like this playlist on my Spotify. It's just like random metal bands. Yeah. I really like Children of Bodom a lot and Soil Work. So like those are like two of my top favorites right now. Yeah. But so is it like so is it like is it like as soon as you wake up, it's just like <sighs> <laughs> it just helps me get ready. Like yeah. I like listening to music when I get ready and when I do things. It just kind of helps me. Yeah, for instead sure. Of just being bored. Yeah, mindlessly I, doing my makeup. <laughs> I gotta, st I gotta, st I gotta like start slow. I like start, I like start with the easy stuff in the morning because I'm still like, I'm uh -huh. <laughs> I had, a, I had a friend who, I, who uh, when I first was moving back to New York City, I was staying with her a couple of days, and she had this crazy like dance song that she would like throw on at 6 a.m. And I never got to see her like, like getting ready, but I could just imagine this, this like, <laughs> just. Like crushing it, like uh, you know, behind doors. Either, either that or like I don't know which is crazier, doing that or like having that level of energy music and then just sitting quietly <laughs> and just doing your makeup. I couldn't imagine. But she, uh, yeah. So I didn't get to. So I still have this thing in my head that like uh, that she's just like, she's, I don't know, like doing. She's like doing all the Spanish dancing and it's not even a Spanish song, but in my head, like that's what happens. So ta I don't know. Tampa seems like it's, uh, it, you know, uh, we're in a, we're in a little spot that it's where it's like it's still developing, right? Uh, yeah. So it seems like it's still trying to like get an identity. Um, I haven't figured out. Um, like, there's nothing I, in Tampa that people are like, oh, go to Tampa, you got to do this thing. Well, we have like clubs, we have the Stras, we have a few like concert places, I guess. Um, there's a few things here, I guess. Yeah. 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 Well, you got uh, you got like an you got an aquarium, I believe. Yeah, we have an aquarium. We have a zoo. We have Bush Gardens. Yeah, that's one okay, thing. That's like I thing. forgot about Bush Gardens. Yeah, that's like the main thing we have. So Bush Gardens. I um. What did <laughs> I do? I I tried to go hiking, uh, the other the other day. Uh, it's just, I'm used to hiking where there's like elevation and you like get a mountain and you like overlook stuff and you like I I accomplished the thing. This was just sort of like. It kind of looked like this. Like it was just like it was just like a lot of this. Yeah, a lot of concrete and construction. Just a lot of flat, <laughs> and then getting uh, incessantly eaten by mosquitoes. Ouch. Um, <laughs> I have this. I have this. What are they? The, my grandma. My grandma's expression. I have the sweetest skin, or I guess the sweetest blood, because they were attacking the shit out of me. <laughs> um, so what? Okay. So what are you? What are you working on now? What are you? Um, um right now, I guess I'm kind of taking like a few weeks off i guess because i've been going through a lot i mostly webcam i shoot i have my own two sites but i barely work on them i need to work on them more and i just shoot for other people yeah very cool yeah uh we met i met a lot of i met a lot of really cool people that are like taking care of me down here like uh, along you know the raquel crew and then the bratty foot and uh, the jason ninja and all those guys they're like awesome. really like they got my back i love them <laughs> they're really and that's and that's all anybody's saying so I, I'm, <laughs> I'm i'm super excited to keep working with them and such and so forth um what uh so uh, what are your sites like what are you uh where's the like the best place to find you on the web I'm on Minivids. I think my name's just Olivia Cassidy. I have Eclipse for Sale, which is uh, Olivia's Orgasmic Adventures, I believe. And then I'm on Streamate as Olivia Cassidy. And I'm on Twitter as Olivia Cassidy XXX. Very cool. Very but cool. I'm shadow banned, so it's kind of hard to find me. Yeah, <laughs> I did find that. Yeah, this is, do you, do you understand? I, th you guys are always way up on tech, so I, I get explained things when I get down here. So I think actually Raquel was the one who started telling me what shadow banning is. Do you, can you explain it to us? Um, it's basically when Twitter, like, gets mad at you for, like, posting naughty stuff, and, like, basically you can't look someone up. You still have a Twitter, people can find you, but it's really, really hard. Yeah. Like, you can't just type in Olivia Cassidy XXX and so I'll pop up. So it makes it really harder for me, because how are people supposed to find me? Right, so know? from inside the app, it's like, yeah, it's, it doesn't, uh, even if you have the person's name, even if you know their handle... Yeah. You can put it in and, and it doesn't show up. And then the other thing that happens is generally when you when you if you add symbol you start typing it you know starts giving you somebody's thing. Yeah. And then so if I if I add symbol you and put it into a tweet it doesn't like confirm that you exist. Yeah, it's really stupid. So you have to like <laughs> know for sure that you're putting in the right one. But uh, so I just go out of it and I go to Google Chrome and I and I Google 
and then I get the thing, and then I swing it back. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a that's a weird little. I don't know why is it called shadow banning. I have no idea. That's just what they call it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I'm trying to understand because it's. I'm trying to understand the terminology because like you still exist. It's weird because you still exist. They just want to make it harder to find minimize you. it. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting thing. And Twitter's the only social media that is like um, sort of nude friendly. Yeah, I mean Tumblr is, but no one really uses Tumblr, <laughs> right. so it's like have a tumblr but like i don't even use it i don't know because no use one's tumblr. on there what about pinterest is pinterest nude friendly i have no idea i don't <laughs> have a pinterest <laughs> i don't think anybody needs that for pinterest that's fun that's funny <laughs> the uh, what are the uh, what, uh, what are the other so facebook is horrible for it yeah you can't post anything remotely nude on there or suggestive instagram uh, Instagram's touchy. Like I know people use Instagram, but like they don't like sex workers at yeah. all. Well, they're getting really. Um, people are getting very creative about about putting just putting yeah. things covering their nipples, um, whether it be an emoji or, or an actual thing. I saw something where like they were banning bad words on Instagram, and one of them was stripper. So you couldn't even like tag things as stripper anymore. Interesting. Which was kind of messed up because it's just dancing. Like yeah. it's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Super yeah, bad. I, I did have this experience when I was trying to post <coughs> that show, the porn stars are comedians. Uh, they, when I when I went to send it on one of the forums in uh, in Tampa Bay or one of the event calendars, it said, uh, it said y there's profanity, yeah. in one uh, in in your event description, and I was like, what the hell? Uh, and just the word porn, they were calling profanity. So I had to like I had to do you know p at symbol. Uh, Profanity. Uh, so that's that's interesting. That's an interesting. Uh, so yes, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I got ban. I got. I've had videos from this taken down on um, on YouTube. I think uh, one of the. Uh, I think with Sylvia Sage, we were talking about how sometimes how you get. Uh, sometimes you'll get poop on your dick. Yeah. And that got flagged. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> I've thought about down. making a YouTube. I just haven't yet. Probably not like anything like porn related, but just like fun shit because i like to sew and i do crafts oh and no stuff, shit so okay my sister's learning how to um is it knit or crochet i think she's learning how to crochet what's the one with the hook um crochet has a hook and the knitting's like with two hooks i guess yeah but crocheting right. is really hard i've tried but i can't my mom used to crochet so so do you let you like hand make all your clothes now or what's the i'm not really like it's a lot harder <laughs> I've handmade it a lot, handmade a lot of my clothes in high school and stuff, but I kind of got out of it for a bit. I know how to alter stuff. Like I can alter stuff like crazy. So, D uh, do you find that you need to, or this is just like this is for fun? Like do you get home a and you're like, well, this both. isn't gonna work. A little bit of both. Okay. <laughs> so then this is uh, so th I don't know. So then you would do like uh, well, what would be your YouTube channel? It would be uh, 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 sewing with Olivia. Yeah, probably something then, like that. And then you just and then you sort of dictate the sewing process. Yeah. I I remember so I got I got to do some sewing at home and I did a good job, but uh, I just like I look at I look at it now and it's like I'll even I'll, I'll like have that situation where like I come home or like a button pops off or like the pants are just a little too short a little too long, and I look at it and I'm like well these are useless there's no way <laughs> that I'm gonna be able to figure out how to do this it's like one of those things that just seem it seems like it's so far removed from my base of knowledge. That it like makes me not like I look at a picnic table and I go okay I, f I understand how they can make that and I look at a dress and I'm like I don't know what the fuck happened I don't know how you did that <laughs> I don't know how you made it I don't know how you made it so it hang and hung on my shoulders properly it seems like a like a crazy uh, out of this world thing it's very complex <laughs> yeah uh, and it, and and at the same time it's not it's like when you have the knowledge you're like yeah. oh okay yeah yeah fix it and do the thing cut the thing spin spin the thing you're good to go um, I do find that people in this in this business. Um, it seems like people are uh, the 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 viewership and the fans. They they're like they're interested in on on a whole other level. So 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 it it seems like you would get your fans to want to come over and watch the, the 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 sewing and the whole thing. Yeah. Um, because it, I don't know. In my experience of of uh, uh, personal life, people that have been camming, they 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 do the m the most successful work when they're just talking to their fans. Yeah. And they just take a moment and they just do a little chat session and then that sort of becomes the most successful one of the week. How do you um how do you make sure to be relevant to your fans and how and to like be on top of it? Do you get trolled? I get trolled a lot. Um I try to ignore them and just not deal with it. Like yeah. I've been straight up cyberbullied and it's just like, come on. Oh, what happened? 
I don't really want to talk about it too okay. much. It wasn't even on like Twitter. It was literally on my personal Facebook. Yeah. I don't want to put anyone on blast. Sure. But you know. So how do you deal with it? Did you did you did you like call in the uh, the 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 Facebook cops? No, I just blocked them. Okay. And then I blocked them on Messenger actually because they were harassing me on Messenger. They went on my wall and posted like all this mean nasty stuff, and then I had to block them like yeah. completely. And I'm just like, really, grow up, man. <laughs> I find it so it happens a lot uh, with with comedians and then and then they I think I think comedians think it's like a shot at at like more notoriety so they'll like go in they'll like go they'll like try to go blow for blow with this person and then if it goes weird they just post the conversation and then because like so like if they can't <laughs> so if they can't beat the uh, the 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 um, the troll then they just put it back up to the community and like look for support that way yeah it's kind of funny to watch. Um, so okay, so th- so we were asking how to how you how you positively res- uh, respond to your fans. I try to tweet daily. I have a really hard time doing it. Like I deal with a lot of like personal issues, but I just try to talk to people, talk to people that tweet at me, always reply to them, that kind of thing. Yeah. Do you have um like do you secretly have like favorite fans? Somewhat, yeah. Yeah, and then. Uh, it's like I don't know. I, I that this is a, yeah. This is the thing I I don't have an experience on. Like uh, like when when like when like you you like you haven't talked to your friends in a while and they're like go missing or whatever. They like been gone a couple of weeks. And you're like, hey, where you been? Do you have that like do you have that type of relationship with a fan where like it's just like definitely they, they've like disappeared for like three weeks and you're like, hey, what? Yeah. What? Are you alive? Yeah. What happened? Well, that's cool. Um. So what else? Okay. So if you if, if you didn't if you didn't do a, a sewing page. And it wasn't a and it wasn't a page related thing. What would what would your what would your YouTube page be? What would be your other? Hmm, probably just like talking about my life and doing my job. <laughs> yeah. All the funny shit that happens, I guess. Well, so for example, what do you like? If you if we were gonna put you on the the porn stars of comedians, what like do you have a do you have like a crazy story that like it only happened to you? It oh my being god. In this industry? I was shooting in a house that was like it literally almost burnt down while we were about to shoot. It was crazy. And so, how many? So it's just a standalone house, or it's yeah, like, like this guy rented. I don't want to like put him like out there, but he rented an Airbnb, and yeah. we were supposed to shoot like a boy girl scene. <laughs> and I was getting ready in the bathroom. I walk out. I smelled something burning, and I'm like, I'm like, hey guys, I smell something burning. And they're like, oh no, no, it's fine. We just put it out. I guess the producer accidentally started a fire in the backyard, but they put it out. Oh, so they already knew that there was sort of a fire. Yeah. So like, I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. They already put it out. We get back, do paperwork, start taking pictures, all this stuff. And then my friend that was filming was all like, I'm gonna check the backyard because it still smells like smoke. Yeah. He opened the back door. The whole entire backyard was on fire, and like. Like the back half of the house was on fire. Oh like it already God. caught on fire. So we had to like get all the equipment, get everything, and rush out. Yeah. And it was crazy. Didn't like, even try to stop the fire at that point. Well, we tried. We were throwing water on it. Yeah. But like it was completely useless. Oh my so gosh. She just, just like watched the house burn down. It didn't burn completely down. The fire department came and like luckily took care of it. But we couldn't shoot there. Like the house was unlivable after yeah. that. Well, so. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't worried about that. I could shoot there. I aired me my apartment, so now I'm worried that people are <laughs> are a shooting content and be burning down my house. <laughs> yeah, it oh, was bad. Crazy. If we would have waited like a few more minutes before checking it, we've been running out the door about ass naked. Yeah, would have just been horrible. And thank God we got <laughs> the equipment. But that guy, that guy, poor guy's house, though. Man, what does that review look like? <laughs> uh, well, listen, I'm just gonna make up a name here. Brian uh, rented my Airbnb on a Friday, and that I was, was a called Friday. on a Monday to find out that my home had burned down. <laughs> That's crazy. Do you do? You, uh, do you have any? Do you, were you a part of like the rest of the conversation? Like, did you know? Um, I know they. Uh, we actually ended up shooting at my house because I lived really close. Yeah. I'm like, you can shoot at my house, whatever. But, like, I guess they had to contact the dude they were renting yeah. from and stuff. I think he had homeowner's insurance. How so mad fine, does somebody get if you burn down their house when you're – because I guess that's the other question is, like, whether or not they – um like, he was planning – like, he like a lot of these people just, just get the house and then only Airbnb it, so, wh- like, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. But, like, that's – like, if it burns down, like, that's my house and, like, all my clothes. I'd be yeah. I'd be very upset. But I wouldn't want to make that conversation. Like, I, I smashed a window on a rental car, and I didn't even want to have that, have that conversation. And it was, like, no fault of my own. But to call someone and be like, hey, bro, I think um, I think I burned down your house. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you think you burned down my house? Well, I, I burned down your house. What was the cause of the fire? How did he start a fire in the backyard? Um, I guess the main producer was outside smoking. And yeah. he put out the cigarette butt on a tree stump that was basically a living tree stump. I have no idea how it caught on fire, to oh, be honest. Oh, wow. 
but he put it out on the tree stump, walked away. My friend walked out, saw the fire, put it out, went back inside, but I guess the fire, like, creeped into the tree trunk. Yeah. And, like, you couldn't see it, and it kind of just caught the whole backyard on fire. Yeah, and by the time it comes out of the tree, it's over. Yeah. Oh, that's insane. That's, that's, that is the craziest, yeah, that's gotta be, that's gotta be the craziest. I wish you guys shot during it. You know what (laughs) I mean? I wish, like, that, like, that could have been the, the video. Uh. That would have been interesting. Yeah, they would. I mean, that would get hits. I'll tell you right now. Uh, House burns down during porno. Yeah, or yeah, may, or whatever the normal tags would be, like yeah. uh, like uh, um, I don't know, um, whatever it was. Man, man watches woman masturbate while house is on fire. I was telling my friend about it as it was happening. And they're like, how did this fire start? And I'm like, I don't know. Too much friction. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough lube, maybe. Man starts fire d- <laughs> during sexual intercourse. With <laughs> yeah, I'd watch that. It's a good video. Holy shit. All right, do you have anyone? Do you, do you have another one? That's a great story. Do you have another one? That, do you have another one up there? I mean, nothing matches that, right? But. There's probably some crazy stuff. It's just so much has happened. Um, How long have you been in this, in this industry? Um, Since 2014. Okay. Like four years. Just four years. And then do we tell people how old you are? Is that a thing? I'm actually 23. 23. Very cool. We were. I was going through the thing with uh, um, Stefan Yamafra. We were like looking at other people's profiles, and it was, it was like how uh, they keep listening. Everybody is like 21. Yeah. And we're like, I've known of this person for at least five years. Like they can't still be 21. This is not possible. <laughs> I get casted to look a lot younger than I actually am, and it kind of bothers me a little bit. Okay, interesting. Like, I don't like being portrayed as someone that's barely of age or actually underage, because yeah. I feel like the way people portray me is like a high schooler a lot of times. Right. And it, and I'm starting to get kind of bored with it and, like, uncomfortable with sure. it, because it's just like, I'm 23 years old. Can you please book me as an adult woman and, like, treat me like an adult woman right, like, right. on camera? But... You know. So right now it's all like it's all like pigtails and like yes. emo outfits. Yes, I had braces for a while too, so that didn't help. Oh <laughs> yeah, that that yeah, that, well that that well that did help. I mean, it didn't help what you want, but it helped. It helped I'm with sure. the look, yeah. of course, but <laughs> to, to push the thing into a, into another uh, dimension. Yeah, I don't know what. I mean, let's let's look at it from the other perspective. Uh, Sylvia Sage, shout out Sylvia Sage. She was in one of like like the in like the 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 first round of of me just trying to decide what this podcast even was, and she was actually the poop dick conversation and she's she's my age she's 35 and she came into the industry like like after 30 and on the only role she's ever gotten were milf roles so it's like you know there's sort of like for some reason there's sort of like no middle like there's is like too young or too old uh there's no sort of like hey can i just be like a like a person exactly who's the same like age as somebody like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not really taboo let me ask you this. Uh, this because we're in the, we're in this sort of community, and I haven't had a, an in depth in depth conversation about this quite yet, and I want to. Um, I think we're in a weird position now with this industry where people can get something that they want, but uh, but the danger is that they won't actually ask their partner for it. I see that a lot, actually. Yeah. And then it's like um, I don't know. Do you, do you think that it's uh, opening communication, like? For people sexually, or is it, or is it closing it off, and what's the, what's the blowback of that? I think it could go either way. I mean, it's good for people to like see that they're not alone in things that they like, and kind of know that there's other people out there there that enjoy it and stuff. But at the same time, I feel like it's healthier to be open with your partner yeah. and talk to them, even if they judge you, even if they you know, don't want to speak with you anymore. I mean, that shows what kind of character they are. They're not going to love you and accept you for who you are. I mean, if you like feet and you're not comfortable telling your partner that you like feet and you're afraid they're going to judge you and, like, just be awful to you about it, like, you probably shouldn't be with them anyways because they're not open-minded. They're not going to love you for who you are. That's how I look at it. I think it's going to get worse. I don't think any... I don't think there's anybody really out there. I mean, when I... You know, I do comedy and, and... when I get to the point of my set where we're talking about sex, uh, an audience that you thought was like all closed off or whatever, now you know, and they're and they're older and they're married or they're younger or whatever, like they like everybody sort of opens up about sex and they and like it's a, because I'm up there talking about particular activities and 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 
you know, trying to do the differences between what men are capable of, women are capable of, and it and it works. And so I think people are way more open than they than they claim to be. Yeah. And then if they get that opportunity, and they, you know, I, I don't know that your that your person's going to judge you for for liking feet. I think that I think they would rather have you do it with them than exactly go into the den when they're not around. You know, and have this like weird secret, and they're like the m- the more that you like hide it, the worse it gets, yep. and the more it does become a secret. Yep. Like the last thing you want to do is walk in on your significant other, watching something that you guys don't do, and they're sort of like caught off guard, and like they're clearly, really like into that thing, because like we could have been doing that thing the whole time. Yep. <laughs> and now you've built this thing up, and you've removed me f- from it, and now I don't know how to get back into it. I don't know how to be your 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 foot girl now that you've decided that all these people are. <laughs> I've, I've been finding things out about myself uh, through through you know talking to people in this industry is everybody's been so great and awesome and, and amazing. But I'm starting to find that I, that I think my um, the way that I like c- consume porn or whatever the things that I was looking for was always sort of like this like um, the mystique of not knowing the person right. And so yeah. it's like I, I was able to like add personality or add. Um, I don't know, like make up my own, you know, things about them. Uh, so now that I know people's internet and how great everybody is, it's like it's making it hard for me to even like sort of uh, like I'm fans of people. But then it's like, I don't know, there was something that 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 I was doing and it's making me understand that, that yeah, this that this like stranger complex, which is not something I get in my regular everyday life is maybe something um, that's building. And again, because it's not a thing that I get. I think as soon as you don't uh you don't get uh a thing then that becomes like what you crave for some reason. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Are there thing are so what are you what are you drawn to? Like when do you watch? Do you uh, are you fans of people? What do you uh I don't watch a lot of porn. Like I don't know, I just I've never watched porn. I'm more I read a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like I like reading smut. That's how I I am, okay. I guess. But I also like writing too. Like I write a lot, so that's one thing I also enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Wait, well, writing in in general or writing smut? I like writing in general, but I specifically like writing smut. Okay. So. Well, where uh, is there? Uh, do you, are you putting it out there? Are no. <laughs> this is just for you. It's just for me. I don't oh, put wow. it out there. I've thought about it, but like I'm very self conscious. So. It's uh, I don't know. It's an interesting thing because you're. That medium, you're connecting with somebody on such a greater level because they're gonna, they're gonna, they're sitting with it and they're like bringing their own experiences to it and they're visualizing what's going on. I think I don't even really know the complexity of smut. Uh, uh, d- like, describe this genre to me. Like, what is it? I don't know. Like, I think it gives you the opportunity to like play it in your head and like vision exactly what you want. Yeah. And like, porn is just kind of like two people, you know. They're already doing the stuff. Yeah. I like reading stories leading up to things, and there's more depth to it. I don't know. It like it turns me on more because yeah. there's more depth behind what's going on. Yeah. Is there like is there like um is the build up you think part of the, the 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 better part of it? Definitely, definitely. And so what is so uh, this is what I'm trying to figure out, but the the genre of smut is it just is it it's um. I mean, we're talking. We're talking about like, like, uh, what were they? What were they? The the penthouse letters or whatever. I don't think I've read those, but. But it's like it's this it's this idea of like oh you know it's like it, it's a slow build and you're talking about the thing or it's like it's not just immediately raunchy. Yeah, that sounds cool. No, I'm a, I'm asking you. I like is that is yeah. that with the is that with uh, we uh, when you say smut, I think a lot of us don't know what that means. Um, I guess it's just like storylines that lead up to it, and like it's more descriptive. Like I like reading descriptive stuff. And how graphic does it get? I think it's pretty graphic. Yeah. <laughs> and I like reading it for myself because it's like you can put yourself there instead of you know just watching two people fuck. Yeah. It's more entertaining to me. Like no, nothing against porn. Like porn is awesome. Yeah. But I was talking to I was talking to somebody off podcast and they were telling me <laughs> that they um so I, I they were they they were re- they really listen to the soundtrack of porn. Sometimes they'll they'll listen as opposed to. Uh, watch yeah because they can tell uh, from listening like when somebody's really like having a good time and really enjoying it and really and uh, and then that's sort of the thing that turns them on more there was a I, I had that I actually had that as a um, with the with the silly enough the um, the 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 song doing it from from uh, LL Cool J was he had the, he had this woman with this incredibly sexy voice and they sort of like they basically like they make it sound like they're having sex at the end of the song, and I was 14, <laughs> and Damn. and it when it turned me, and I would have to like, 
I have to rem- like just like I would have to remove myself to watch a Mariah Carey video. I have to remove myself to like go listen to this song like in my room by myself. <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. It's crazy all like all of the senses that we add to the thing, and then how that how that uh, makes the experience that much better. So, uh, do you travel? What are your what are your like year plans, goals, etc.? Um, I'm traveling to New Jersey next month for a shoot. Um, I travel for shoots. If someone's booking me and they're paying for my flight and stuff, like I totally love that. I love traveling. I really want to travel more, to be honest. Yeah. I might go to Exotica. I think it's Exotica in Miami that mm, this month. Yeah. I think I might go to that. I'm not sure yet, but I love traveling. <laughs> Do you go to the other Exotica? So next week is um, Chicago. In November is New Jersey. There was Denver. I've never been to any event other than FatCon. Oh, no shit. Okay, very cool. Yeah. And you've been going to FatCon since 14 or? Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> now, describe that event for me because I don't. Um, It's really fun because producers, models, everyone from like all over the state, all over the United States, pretty much I think all over the world just come here. And it's just like a fun weekend. People shoot. There's events. There's classes. There's vendors. There's all kinds of like fun stuff how going on. How there's big is the party. fan part of it? I don't know how big the fan part of it is. Like I haven't really met many fans at no Fun. Sure. Like I think it's cool. I think people should come out and like meet people. But I think a lot of people get shy or something. I don't know. Yeah, it is. It's, it's it not really fan based. I don't feel like it's I think a weird. It should be, but it's it not is really. a weird thing. And like, and I've met people that I that I sort of uh, felt that I was a fan of, and then interviewing them sort of was yeah. It had this weird like it had this different vibe. Uh, I don't know. It's weird like this this thing because we've created such a, a market of people that we like can access yeah. without ever meeting. Uh, through YouTube, through whatever, whatever thing, you know, like movies, all the things. Like, th- I feel like this thing of, like, seeing somebody and being, like, um, I don't know, overwhelmed by just them being in the building is getting worse. I've had plenty of fans, like, message me, tweet at me, be like, hey, you're going to be a fat con, I'd like to meet you. And then I never see anyone, no one ever comes up to yeah. me, like, Olivia. So it's like, I don't know if there's just too many people and I don't see them or if they just don't They get come. so nervous yeah. when, they're, when they're walking around. Yeah, there was, a, uh, I, was I was sharing stories with, with some of the other people and they like there's this thing where like um, uh, you get recognized and then and then uh, six hours later somebody like tweets and they go, oh, I saw you at such and such yeah. a place. And you're like, why didn't you walk over, idiot? Uh, but yeah, there's this thing. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's better than the other guy, right? Like the guy who like sees Will Smith and runs over and acts yeah. like he knows Will Smith, and they're taking photos and they make it look like they're in the same family. <laughs> I never understood that. That's the thing I don't get is like the the the, the celebrity aspect of like um, I don't know, like like gassing a person up like that, right? That's never happened to me, but I'm very thankful. <laughs> yeah. Especially if I'm out with my family and someone comes up to me and goes, Olivia, I'm like, I'm not Olivia right now. Please go away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, do you, how, how do you deal with that? Or how would you deal with that? I don't know. I'd probably just try to be as polite as possible, but be like, hey, like, okay, this can't, is, you can't do that. This is my my familia. Okay? Yes. We got to separate. We got to <laughs> separate at some point that what the two lives are. My family knows, but like, I'd rather not put them in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. I wonder. I don't know. I've never been in a situation where, and this is obviously a far different thing, and the and the and the st- and the, uh, the 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 contributing factors are very different. But I've never. I don't know. I don't think I'd want to be even with my family and have somebody like try to come over and try to talk about my comedy. It's just like, <laughs> it's like, it, I don't know. It, it's like that's the that's you know that's for a different place and it's for a different time. And like this is like this is like clearly like my personal time, clearly my family time, clearly my whatever. Um, and yeah, I think it is tough for people to respect. That. I do. I hear. I see this a lot where people will be like, "Oh, I met Larry David." They'll tell me. They'll tell me stories. They'll just like they'll have met a random comedian. They're like, "Oh, I met Larry David, and he was a dick to me." And I was like, "What was he though?" Or were you just being a dick? Like, and like he doesn't know you. Yeah. Like there's no reason why he ne- he doesn't know that you know anything about like that you think you have an intimate relationship with him because you've laughed at him and you've watched his shows and you think you know his body of work, but he you he wasn't there for that. Yeah, like he's not a participant in the thing. That's you know that's sort of that's that's the danger in all of this. It's like you know you get off stage and then somebody's like, oh, everything you said like spoke to me, or like you know they watch your videos or they or they chat with you and it's like it becomes this 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 extra thing that you don't have any control over and it like then then it grows in their mind. It's kind of like the, it's you know it's kind of like it's kind of like a fetish. It's like um, 
I, I, I guess that's probably the, the, the closest thing to it is that people get a fetish for a person, and that's the yeah. fandom. And I then they become like obsessed that. with this person, and then it becomes overwhelming. So FetCon is what? FetCon is the end of August, uh, early early August? Yeah, it's like, I think it's early to mid-August. I forget. I have to check the dates, but... It's like a thing that, that this whole industry looks forward to, and... Most of us. I know a lot of people, like, aren't excited about it or, like, don't want to go to it anymore because it's, like, fallen a lot, but... Yeah. I didn't know what FetCon was like before 2014. So, so what's the what what's the thing that they think that's changed and that's and that's fallen off? They used to have it in Tampa. I don't know where at, like somewhere around here, and they moved it to St. Petersburg. And I guess I changed a lot of the rules. They like changed stuff. My first year, I got in for free. Like I got a model pass. I got in. Yeah. But like now, it's like we have to buy our own passes, no shit. and there's like a lot of rules, and it's just like I'm just I'm basically go there because it's extra work and it's not working and stuff. Yeah, I like to have fun and go to classes and stuff, yeah. but like I'm mostly there to work. What are the classes? They have like I took this really awesome one. My uh, buddy Catherine Fox teaches it every year. It's woop like woop. improv acting. Yeah. For fetish acting, she calls it fetish acting. It's not fetish modeling because we're not sitting in front of a camera taking pictures. We're actually on camera right, acting. Right, right. So she teaches this really fun improv class, and it's, it really helped me a lot. And I feel like if you're a new model, you should definitely check it out. Just chill and open up yeah. and interact a little bit more with the camera. And, and they also have, like, classes on, like, spanking, tying up, like, different fetishes and that kind of thing. And it's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, what is, I had that experience at Exotica, but Exotica is a fan-driven thing. So then, what be, what's what what is a class? Some of the stuff they had, so they had some Dom stuff, and yeah. they had some uh, um, so some submission stuff, uh, and then there was just sort of the other the other side where people there was actually a, a segment where people were like, "How do I?" And it's just like this is like a lot of dudes in the back of the room. How do I? Uh, how do I become a porn star? And they're just so like, annoying. And they're just like asking this thing. Yeah, th and that's what I'm getting the most now these days is that people are like messaging me on on these videos and saying, "How do I become a porn star?" And I said, "Listen, man, I'm a comedian. I don't know how to help you. This is on you." <laughs> porn sucks for dudes. You don't want to do it. I right. promise. Right. Yeah. What's the? Yeah. Why? Well, uh, we'll, gi well, give us give us the synopsis of why it's so bad. Um, are you going to be okay with getting your dick hard, keeping it hard for like five hours, not being able to come, maybe more than five hours actually sometimes, and then like, you know, weird old men getting like three inches away from your ball sack and still being able to stay hard and come on command. Like, come on. Not many people can do that. <laughs> there's, a, there's this great video. Um, I can't remember who's in it. I think it's Xander and, and another guy. And <laughs> and he's and, and he's like on he's like like on him like a backpack like a koala he's like wrapped around him on a counter and he's standing up and he's like getting a blowjob and they have the cameras on his, on Xander's chest yeah and the guy's wrapped around him and they're like they're they're like cheeks are touching and it said something to the effect of like uh, like you know your boys when you know it's like it's one of these kinds of things and it's this great picture uh, of just like yeah like how how weird and awkward it could be. I, you know, I meet I meet so many people who like um, I had one story where me and my brother like just randomly like eight years ago almost ended up in like a weird threesome situation. <laughs> and people were like, no, I would never like, you know, I was like, no, I would like with my brother is the way it, it should happen. Like that's family, you know, keep it in the family. <laughs> uh, and uh, so people are like, yeah, people don't want to be like near somebody like that. So you got a guy on your chest you know, hanging on to you like a backpack. That's the, that's the life. That's the business. All right. We, um. So uh, let's plug out your stuff one more time. So it's Olivia Cassidy. It's all A's. Um, XXX is yes. the Twitter. K-A-S-A-D-Y for Cassidy, like carnage. <laughs> and then tell us again how to, how to find your content. So uh, the thing I try to promote every time is pay for your porn. Uh, you know, the people uh, people get, get their hands on content and they didn't pay for it. That means probably the, the model or the artist didn't get any money for it. It was stolen. <laughs> But yeah, I'm on many vids as Olivia Cassidy, K A S A D Y. I'm on Clips for Sale as Olivia's Orgasmic Adventures. And you can find me on Streamate sometimes when I'm camming as Olivia Cassidy. Cool. Uh, do you have do you have like a like a consistent schedule? Do you do you tell people on there when you're going to be on? I haven't had a consistent schedule yet, but hit, I usually tweet when I get You'll on. Throw a so tweet. If you're on then, Twitter, hey, I'm about to be on. Yeah. Go check me out. Very cool. Well, thank you to my guest Olivia Cassidy for doing this as a Points of People podcast. You. We're on uh, iTunes, we're on Google Play, wherever you found us. We're on the other thing. Uh, we did some fun YouTube content today of us hanging out uh, doing the episode. Thank you guys for listening. We drop a new episode every Sunday. Please keep listening. Uh, I don't know how to be a porn star, so uh, don't ask.